today let's talk a little bit of 3D printing heresy. Now, I'm not talking about anything crazy on the level of, hey man, the earth is just a giant turtle floating in a sea of dark matter. I'm just talking about opinions that seem to be at odd with popularly held beliefs. Now, if you check out why filament gets brittle, particularly PLA filament, everywhere on the internet, they'll tell you, keep it at low humidity. If it gets moist and it absorbs moisture, it's going to start cracking. And even though usually under those comments, you see a lot of people saying like, I live in Southern California. It's 80% humidity all the time. I have filament that I've printed just fine after a year. There still doesn't seem to be anybody addressing that. Now, I understand part of that's because there are businesses that want to sell you fancy schmancy filament storage units and dehumidifiers. And I'm not saying those are a bad thing because we definitely know that if you absorb too much moisture in filament, it's gonna swell, you're gonna get little pockets of moisture and you get spitting and sputtering and that's bad, obviously. But I'm talking here about the brittleness issue. Now I started thinking down this path actually a long time ago because I, I didn't really see humidity as the only or even the main factor contributing to this phenomenon. But one of my Patreon subscribers did an experiment of his own and it ended up printing just fine. I did something similar where I just took some PLA, threw it in water for a couple days, took it out, let it dry, uh, bent it back and forth, didn't break, wasn't brittle at all, put it in the 3D printer and it, it printed just fine. I wanna use controlled conditions using several possible factors to see which factor or which combination of factors is most responsible for this phenomenon. Because I don't know about you, but I don't wanna to have to worry about more than I have to worry about. Like if I don't have to be dehumidifying and putting desiccants in a sealed container because it's actually, you know, light exposure or something like that to see problem, then I, that'll simplify life greatly. So obviously there's gonna be a part one and a part two to this video. In this first part, I'm gonna set up the experiments and I'll give a couple basic bits of background information so that we could just kind of get our feet wet. And then I have a whole treasure trove of information that we'll go into in nerdy detail in the second video. So let's get to that. So here's the filament that's been sitting on my spool above the printer. You can see right here that I just pulled it out and it's unusably brittle. I can't print with it anymore and it's only been up there for a couple of weeks. Now the thing about that is that it's never ending winter here in Philadelphia this year. So we've had the heat on and since it's forced air, humidity usually hovers between like 15 and 40% or so at the most. But I moved this test bed printer over by my makeshift exhaust hood here because I have to print in my workshop in close proximity and I didn't want to have to worry about fumes and particles. And while my shades are usually drawn, there's still quite a bit of ambient light coming out in this position where there wasn't when my printer was by my workbench. So just to see what's going on here, I happen to have a bunch of spools of filament that are mostly used up that I just keep up here on some shelves. Now they're gonna be at the exact same humidity as the filament that's all crackly and terrible, but they're out of the light and they're out of the airflow. Some of these are over a year old and they've been subjected to varying conditions, high and low humidity, high and low heat. They've absorbed moisture up to 80% humidity and then dried out. So if there were any physical changes that were going to occur because of that moisture cycle, we would have seen them by now. So I decided to pull a bunch down and see how they behaved sitting over there. And then I'm going to do a test print just to see how they work out. Now this filament's a couple months old, so I'm just going to pull off a piece and then give it a bend test and see how it behaves. And as you can see, it's pretty good. There's no snapping. I have to bend it back and forth a couple of times before I can get it to break. And it looks printable to me. Same thing with this hatchbox filament that's a little bit older, probably six months old. That's even better shape, probably because the hatchbox filament's slightly better than you know, the generic stuff. And the same went for the gray mono price uh, PLA plus filament. That also seemed to be nice and pliable and probably printable. And then I just tried that again with about seven different spools and most of them seemed to be pretty good. Then I remembered that I had this spool right here with the starter filament that they give you with printers and samples and things like that. And that's been sealed up in this bag. I ha haven't opened it. So that's been held at a much lower humidity and it's just been subject to light and not air. And that's just falling apart in my hands. 
let's go ahead and try to print with some of this stuff and see how it turns out. Now, if you want to skip past this and just get to the experiment, look in the uh, description of this video and I have a time index. You can just click on the little number and skip right ahead. I decided to use this regular old mono price generic black filament because I know exactly what date I purchased it and used it. And I also know that it's been sitting here in the same humidity as the other filament, but it's been in the dark. So I went ahead and loaded it up into the same printer I've been using and then just grabbed something off of my SD card. Regular decahedron it is. Now you know as well as I do that there's no such thing as a regular decahedron, but I will not be constrained by your laws of geometry. I usually like to include print settings whenever I run something off. Uh, I wasn't sure what they were, so I dumped the file into this G-code analyzer and this is what it came up with. So I had no problem with the bed adhesion and it seems to be printing just fine. There was no snapping, and mind you, this is year-old filament that has not been in humidity-controlled environment. It's dry now, so obviously there was no sputtering or anything like that, and the print quality looks, I don't know, just fine. So what the heck is going on here now? Let's talk a little bit about background, and then in the next video, we'll go into more depth. Just to break down what we know, we can look at the ATSM and EN standards for biodegradable plastics, PLA in specific. We know that PLA breaks down into CO2, HTO, and biomass, because it's made of starches. Lots of containers are made out of PLA. Sometimes it's modified, sometimes not. But we do know that it doesn't break down on store shelves, and that it can be composted. Now, active composting standards for PLA are that it should be held above 140 degrees Fahrenheit and above 90% humidity in an environment with oxygen for about 90 days. Alternatively, if you look further into the data, you'll see that landfills are not very good for PLA because even though it's a degradable bioplastic, you can bury it in a moist landfill, but if there's no oxygen and no light down there, it takes between 100 and 1,000 years for it to biodegrade. Now, we're obviously not talking about it breaking down completely. We're just talking about the characteristics changing, but that just helps give us some idea. So it looks like from that, the variables that we have are heat, light, moisture, and air. Now we're talking about filament breaking down in workshop conditions, probably in your house. Maybe it would get as extreme as the attic, but I don't think you're gonna be working at 90% humidity and 140 degrees Fahrenheit where your 3D printer is. So let's take temperature out of the equation and we will just use ambient room temperature which in my case here is around 70 degrees at the moment. And I'm not gonna put it in direct sunlight, so I'll put it over there by the window and put a partition up so that it just gets reflected ambient light for the daylight hours. It's going to get some artificial light for a few hours a day, and then it's gonna be in darkness when I'm asleep. So then if we take the factors that we have left, we can make ourselves a matrix that breaks down into eight different possible combinations. So these samples are gonna be in two groups plus a control sample. We have our dark group, which is going to be dark sealed and dry, dark air and dry, dark sealed and wet, dark air and wet. And then the same thing for the light group. Now to control the dark, I'm going to take these samples, put them in the bags and stick them in a couple old 3D filament boxes, put them out of the light, and then where it's applicable, I'll have air flowing through those boxes. So here's a roll of generic PLA that I'm gonna to use to the test. Now, as you can see right now, it's just fine. Fast forwarding through the cutting process, I'm gonna snip these into complete loops and sort those out into bags. And then I'm also going to snip them into little slivers and stick those in there as well. And for the wet samples, we'll be using ShamWow, which I'll soak in water and then replenish as it dries out. And this is our experiment matrix. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming along with me on this experiment. Like if you dig this kind of concept. And subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're interested in coming along and seeing part two when it comes out. If you have any tips or suggestions, even if it's just anecdotal, go ahead and leave them in the comments. That kind of stuff could always be useful. See you in a while for part two, and I'll have plenty of videos out in the meantime. So until then, get out there and make something awesome.